Welcome to Lizzie's Workshop. Today I'm going to be using one of my overspray pages and um, all I've done is, is sprayed a whole bunch of stuff on there with different stencils or rubbed off my stencils or whatever. Um, I was testing out colors with my um, chalkboard paints and so on and um, so I thought I'd use this page up. So what I'm doing here is I am taking this Prima Girl and I'm putting water-based ink on her. It's a Stampin' Up! ink pad and I'm just putting her on there in, in a repeat pattern. Um, I don't need all of these images but I did want to create a background. So then I just dry it quickly because I don't want it to smudge or smear or anything like that. And then I'm going to take my golden Mars black acrylic paint and I'm going to cover it all up. I can um, actually hear some of you gasping out here, how horrified you are that I've covered up these beautiful girls. Just, just wait. So I learned this method several times actually by accident. And um, I thought, you know, when I'm playing and I get something by accident, I should probably play with it a little bit more and see where I can take it. So um i did take my heat gun and i did go over it several times to dry it a bit just to the point where it was um mostly dry i didn't want it the the stencil to pull it up i wanted it to stay down and then i'm just taking my liquitex flexible modeling paste and i'm filling the stencil up with it um, it doesn't matter how thick your paste is on this stencil usually the thickness of a regular stencil is works just fine for this method, this technique. So um, yeah, it's just how it ends up being. What I wanted for this was um, a stencil that had a lot of space in it, like big spaces, big spots in it. And I was trying to find my honeycomb, but I couldn't find the honeycomb. So I figured that this was just as good to to show this um, process. And then I once again, just kind of tapped it down because my page isn't nice and smooth and even anymore. Um, I've got pages that are completed underneath it and everything, it makes it kind of a, a bumpy texture. So this stencil was had the big spaces and it was flexible. So this is the one that I ended up using for this page. So you just want to smooth it on there nice and nice and smooth across the top. Um, it doesn't have to be thick. It doesn't have to be thin. It happens to this happens to me all the time and I'm trying to zoom in so you can see the effect that's taking place and it's a very slow effect that takes place and it's just not working at all. So what I end up doing is just trying and then I knew I had to let it just sit overnight and to dry for the paste thick paste to dry anyway. So I figured, oh, well, I'll just in the morning, I'll take some pictures for you and I'll include those pictures. So because my stamp was a water-based stamp and the um, everything else is acrylic, it ends up wicking up through the black acrylic paint and through the paste. So I end up as if I've got this these images p stamped on top of the paste. Isn't that awesome? I think that's just the awesome, most awesomest thing in the world. When I want it to happen, when I don't want it to happen, I get quite frustrated. So the next step that I did is I picked a girl that um, met, you know, the, the mostly whole kind of thought process. And then I gave her some coloring with Copic markers. Um, the Copic uh, colors that I used, so the for skin, I used R22, which is called light prawn. So I colored her like a shrimp. <laughs> Um, the pink colors that I used are RV17, which is deep magenta, and RV34, which is dark pink. Then the purples that I used are BV04, which is blueberry, and BV02, which is prune. And then I'm going to use a blue, and, or two blues, B24 is sky, and B26 is cobalt blue. So that's how I colored her. And I wasn't, this wasn't like where I'm going to color it and make it all perfect and wonderful and amazing. Um, I just wanted to add some color to create the impression that she was a solid, a solid shape. Everything else is kind of a, an outline and I wanted a solid shape to kind of distinguish her from the pack, so to speak. 
And then I'm just grabbing my jelly roll uh, black and uh, going over top. Now, one of the problems with the jelly roll is that it likes smooth surfaces. It works really well on smooth surfaces, but because I'm using it over top of paste, I have to keep wiping off the tip with a with a Kleenex because the grit, even if, if I'm writing gently, the grit gets into the ball of the jelly roll and I need to just kind of clean it off regularly so that the pen continues to work. So this whole page was um, inspired by the Word of Inspiration Wednesday that um, Heather at the Craft Shack community, it's called Crafters Community, spelled with two with, with K's, um, they on it's on g plus and what she does is she gives us a word of inspiration on wednesdays so the word of inspiration this past wednesday which i never got around to um was gifts or gift and um so i when i was thinking about this i thought oh you know this is the this is the best word in order to for me to do this technique so the title of this piece ends up being the best gifts are often worth the longest wait so I go through and I decided, okay, well, it's just a, a journal, you know, maybe only I will see it and whoever watches this video, of course, will see it, but it's not all that perfect or important for me to have perfect writing and so forth. So I decided to try to test out some different writing and different lettering. So I use handwriting and block lettering and all that stuff. So I've had these leaves for... I would say two or three years. They're from Basil Basics and they were just kind of in my junket pile. So I thought, you know, finally I'm going to use these leaves. And they're just paper flowers from Basil Basics. Um, yeah, it says paper leaves and branch. So they're not, they're just paper. And then they're kind of textured paper. So then I went over with my um, old olive uh, Stampin' Up! ink pad just to kind of give them a little bit more definition. And then I will be gluing them on with um, Aline's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. And then because these flowers were just so so pretty and the centers were all brown, I thought, you know, I'll grab some brown and I'll put some definition around the outside edges of each flower. And so that's that. And then I just glued everything on with this Aline's tacky glue. Quick dry stuff. Um, I really like this Aline's tacky glue. I don't know how long lasting it's going to be, but I like the, how quickly it dries and how it seems to be pretty good at keeping heavy elements to the page. So we'll see how that wears over time. Um, another good glue to use is a three-in-one, and uh, I got the opportunity to use them some this past weekend, and it all kind of worked out. So the thing that I wanted to mention here is that if you notice how I've staggered my flowers, it's not just um, appealing to the eye to my point of view, but it's also in order to make it so that when the book closes, nothing is on top of each other. So I don't end up with the double thickness of the page, I just end up with a single, single flower thickness of the page. So, so what I'm doing here is I have this um, hi, uh, Dear Lizzie Punch, or story, sorry, stamp, and um, it doesn't say which one it is on it, but it has the days of the week, and then it has today is fun day, all together, happy day, and remember this. I got it in a pack off of the Steels Network a while ago. But, um, so what I'm doing is I'm stamping a whole bunch of dates that I want to remember or things that I had to wait for that are, you know, some of the best things in my life. So one of them is the birth, one of the dates that I stamped on one of those top blocks is the birth of my daughter, <clears throat> who we had to wait seven years for. Um, the next one is um, my, the birth date of my son, who I always wanted a son, so that was really worth the wait. And then there's our wedding anniversary and our 30th birthdays and so on. So the best gifts are worth the longest wait. Thank you for joining me on Lizzie's Workshop.